welcome to yet another new show that we have on Wolverine's Wire and on the YouTube channel. Uh, we call this Random Guest. I don't know why, but that's the name that came into my head. But the guests aren't so random. We are going to be welcoming in uh, various different personalities that you know, that you love, that have something to do with Michigan in one way or the other. I'm sure we'll start with a lot of media type people. And uh, in that light, we are starting with one right out the gates in, you know him, you love him, Scott Bell. Scott, welcome very much to the show. First, uh, the first go around the pilot episode. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an honor to have you, man, to, for you to be the first guest that we're having. Yeah, no pressure. Uh, once you told me it was called a random guest, like it doesn't get much more random than than me. So I, I'm I'm excited. Um, but yeah, should uh, looking forward to chatting. Always uh, always enjoy chatting with you. Well, as the as you know, and as the people that are watching at home don't necessarily know yet, uh, the point of this is not just to get your opinions on all of the Michigan things. We will get that, but uh, it's to get to know a little bit more about who the person is behind the personality, essentially. Uh, so with that in mind, obviously, you went to Michigan, you, 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 you did the Michigan Daily thing. And it's funny that to me that the thought of you doing Michigan Daily, why I categorize it that way as less to do with the fact that, uh, that you wrote for the Michigan Daily and more about the, the football against state news. Uh, so, uh, but what drew you to Michigan? I know you're a Michigan native, but what, Tell me, what was your experience growing up? What got you to be a guy who was like, I need to be at the University of Michigan. This is the school that's for me. It's weird. Um, there's not there's not like a great origin story, like point to it or whatever. But like I grew like my my parents, um, I, I, I'm a first generation college student. So my parents didn't go to Michigan State, but I, I grew up in a town, uh, Fremont, Michigan, which is like really rural, like a lot of um, farmers and uh, I would say 80% Michigan State fans and my parents were like that too. So they, like there are kids or pictures of me as a kid, like a baby um, in Michigan State stuff. And, but like, as soon as like six or seven, my parents talk about how I, I, I really liked Michigan and um, Fab Five stuff was like during elementary school um, time for me. And even then I was like cheering for Michigan. So my whole life or like my whole like conscious childhood, I've just always wanted to go to Michigan, always cheered for Michigan. Um, don't really have a great reason why. And then I, obviously as I got um, older in high school and stuff, I wanted to go to Michigan for um, the academics and, and, and all that good stuff. But when I went to Michigan, I was planning on being, um, I, I wanted to go to law school. Uh, so it was, it was very weird, kind of kind of just happenstance. I've always been really into um, sports, obviously, uh, in, in high school, like playing the sports. Um, we didn't have like a, um, a newspaper or anything. We we're small uh, community or whatever, but I'd like call in scores to uh the newspaper for like my tennis team because my coach didn't like doing that so I, like that that little connection with media I always had an interest but um I kind of just uh started going to Michigan Daily opening or open meetings on on a whim and just kind of fell in love with it really quickly now so that's that's I, I, I was expecting you to have more of an origin story, especially when you said the Michigan State stuff. Maybe you got bit by a Wolverine, like a radioactive Wolverine, and uh, that's how uh, that ended up coming to be. Uh, bad jokes. That that's something you can expect from random guests here uh, on my end, not the not the actual random guest. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, so you got to the Michigan Daily. You, you started uh, taking part in the. Obviously, we a lot of us have seen. Uh, when the Michigan State game comes yearly, uh, the, the pictures that you share from uh, from going up against uh, state news. Uh, tell us a little bit about the some of the, the battles that you had, because Michigan hasn't lost to state news in, I mean, you could probably tell me how many years. I don't know, but I just know it's been a very, very long time. It's three hands worth almost going on to four. So it's it's it puts the Michigan-Ohio State uh, – rivalry to shame which is it's 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 nice to be on the opposite side of one of those things but um but yeah it's it's, it's really fun and and like 
part of why I think I really fell in love at the daily and really liked what we did was like, we did impactful stuff. I got to do some really cool things with journalism. Like I got to cover a Rose Bowl. I got to shoot hoops at Madison Square Garden and like do some really cool things for a college kid, but basically just uh, any person. But what I really liked was I, I made some really true lifelong friendships there. We didn't take ourselves too seriously. And you could do a lot of things like that that were fun, uh, give you some school pride and um, have, have fun sort of rivalry banter without, without like really being overly mean-spirited or, or uh, having things go too brutal. So the, the Michigan, Michigan State game is like perfect example because that whole week, like the week leading up to the game, my each year they have a person at Michigan's campus write a column that appears in Michigan State's paper and then a Michigan State student writes something that appears in Michigan's. So my junior and senior year, I got to do it. And it's so much fun. Um, it's it's, it's kind of like the whole Twitter persona thing where it's almost like you get to play a, a heel in wrestling. And like, I'm, I don't have like all this true like hate and vitriol in my heart for uh, most Michigan State fans. A, a few people uh, truly deserve it. But um, it's just really fun to like, banter and have fun and, and get people riled up. And um, I, I think that's part of what makes um, college rivalry so, so so unique and so much more interesting and why college sports uh, means so much more to me than pro sports. Um, and then and at the end of the week, it culminates with Michigan's student paper playing against Michigan States. And it's super fun. Obvious, obviously, it's fun to, uh, to win all the time, but um, we had some close games. There were some fun moments. Uh, my sophomore year, that was the year Michigan State like staked their flag on Notre Dame's field. And that game happened like a couple weeks before the Michigan Michigan State game. So we, um, and this was the game that started the streak. We took a flag and we staked it on Michigan State's field and a little bit of a skirmish uh, um, happened there. So that, that was fun, but um, it's 95% of it's lighthearted and, 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 and all in good fun. And uh, Lots of really cool memories from from uh, college and all that good stuff. And it, like you said, ninety five percent. And it, it's funny to me because I've I've had conversations with more than one legitimate journalist that uh, more so has the affinity for Michigan State that just loathes you uh, because of the, the way that you uh, you really dig at Michigan State. And I'm sure for, especially like you had mentioned, you would come from a, you would come from a family that, that you were close to Michigan state, your family liked Michigan state. When I was growing up as, as well, it, Michigan state was in a way more of the rival than Ohio state, because I didn't really know growing up that Ohio state was a threat. Uh, obviously things changed in a hurry once Jim Trestle took over, but, a little bit. <laughs> but nonetheless, like you really rankle their feathers uh the the michigan state fans to the point where i mean they they send you some pretty uh I, I, beyond obnoxious uh messages uh what what what's some of the worst that you've seen from your rankling when it comes to that like and, and how do you you take it i don't know if i'd take it as well as you do um, I've, I've had legitimate like threats to, to me. I've had people contact my work. Um, but the fact of the matter is like, if I, th I think I have a worse reputation than, than, than what actually happens. And I think people that um, like, I'll, I'll have bosses at work who like follow me on my, uh, on my fun account, my, my Michigan account and kind of know like, Hey, someone's like, Oh, this, this, this guy's saying all these outlandish things. No, I mean, just because I elicit like, people getting really mad that doesn't mean that I'm also getting super mad or I'm 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 being overly outlandish um I I bring it upon myself like I'm I'm absolutely trying to poke the bear so I can't sit here and say I'm innocent and like and and, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not getting the reaction that I'm largely trying to get in the first place so um I'm I'm not playing the innocence card but like people that take it a few levels up I'm just not really engaging with it anymore. Um, I used to really take it as kind of like a badge of honor and it would, it would be fun, but there's not a whole lot of back and forth stuff anymore. I'll kind of just say like, make a joke, make a quip and just kind of stand back and um, kind of like the, 
the girl on the swing set meme with the fire in the background. I'm, I'm kind of the girl on the swing set right there. So um, it's kind of fun to watch. I'm not, but if, if people are like taking it too seriously or wanting to get into like personal back and forth and stuff, it's, it's, it's not really worth my time and really shouldn't be worth other people's time either. It, that's the funny thing. And actually that's also the reason why I love college sports is despite the, uh, despite the vitriol that does come with rivalries that doesn't really exist outside of, and a lot of people will argue Red Sox Yankees and uh, is, is just as big as Michigan, Ohio state or any of those. And I vehemently disagree with that. The, the vitriol is much higher uh, at the college level and not just between one rivalry. Michigan obviously has multiple. Uh, so a lot of people, obviously, uh, they, they know you from, they might just know you from uh, your, your Twitter account. I personally find a lot of, uh, of value in, you have a newsletter that you started. Uh, I am a paid subscriber. It's the only thing I actually pay for. I don't subscribe to uh, any of the, the newspapers. Uh, I, I mean, as for Michigan's sake, rather. Uh, I don't subscribe to any newspapers. I don't subscribe to... 24 seven rivals on three, uh, any of those. Uh, so what, what inspired you to, to essentially get back into the, you know, to go beyond just joking on Twitter and, and provide some real, I think, beneficial insight into the team. Uh, first and foremost, I appreciate that. It's very, very kind of you to say, um, the newsletter started like right around the pandemic, kind of just a, um, it, it, it actually kind of coincides with the fact that I'm not on Twitter as much anymore. I, I used to tweet quite a bit. I, I mean, I'm still there, especially seasonally in the fall. I'll, I'll be there quite a bit, but it's lot, like poking the bear and like the jokes and stuff has kind of lost a little bit of its luster because a some people, e either people get it and they know that I'm not going to, uh, not going to, uh, do stuff if I don't get the reaction or the majority of the reactions are just annoying. So um, part of what I liked about Twitter early on was it was a great sort of community experience and like you can watch games and stuff and there's still that element of it, but I feel like kind of creating a uh, sort of a subcommittee um, with the newsletter, it, A, it's, it's, an, it's an avenue where I can share sort of real thoughts without like it being a 280 character blurb and, and, um, um, but also kind of provide something where, um, I, I think Michigan's journalists, like Michigan has great people, like a, a high volume and a high quality of people providing stuff, but I still feel like there may be little niches where, um, it, it wasn't necessarily always being served. So this is kind of more of a, long form avenue to um, kind of do deeper dives into things, but also have it be a little more subscriber driven. Like I, I'm really big into asking people what they want to hear, um, answering people's questions. If someone's like, hey, I think this would be really interesting to check out. I'm trying to make it be um, more sort of interactive and collaborative. Um, and it, it, it kind of started just as a, let, let's see how this can go kind of thing. And uh, the reaction was really good. Um, it, I also learned very quickly that I was going to be sinking a lot of time into it. And um, I have a full-time job at the Dallas Morning News. Uh, I have a wife, I have two young kids. So I kind of realized this wasn't going to be a sort of a hobby thing. So within a couple months, I kind of realized, hey, this is going to be, if it's going to be something I'm going to sink a lot of um, time and passion and, and, and um, of my finite free time into, we're going to turn it into kind of a a premium thing, but we're um, kind of a year and a half into it, and it's 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 been great, and I'm uh, actually really excited for the season to start uh, start back up, both from a fan perspective, but also to uh, to kind of get year two of the uh, the newsletter in earnest, because um, even though the basketball team did great last year and it was a great run, um, this Michigan's fan base is still fueled by football, even when, when things are at its worst. So uh, it's, it's nice to see um, the interest kind of tick back up and hopefully we have a good fall. Yeah. And that's definitely true. i I get that question on the podcast constantly about uh, what are we, you know, are we a basketball school now? I said, well, the numbers do not bear yeah. that out. Unfortunately, uh, speaking of, this was the second year that uh, you had uh, me and 
it seems just about every uh, every journalist that's covering Michigan uh, way in as to the what we expect to happen in the season. And it seemed like we reached much more of a consensus this year compared to uh, to last. Uh, eight and four seems to be the case, uh, at least consensus wise. Now that we're getting into the season, we're just mere basically hours away. What what do you when you look at this Michigan team, what are your expectations? Because like I've been saying eight and four is what I'm going to put on paper. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes either seven and five or nine and three. I'm starting to lean more nine and three. Maybe I'm buying in too much to the uh, to what I hear in press conferences. But what what, what do you think? Is, uh, what would your expectations be as the season's about ready to kick off? Yeah, I don't have I don't have the grid right in front of me, but I think it was all but I think 13 out of 15, 14 out of 16 people had either eight and five or um, or had eight and four or seven and five. And there's that's that's pretty, pretty congested together for a team where I think Michigan has a, a, a much larger set of variants there. I mean, we saw last year that things can go um, off the rails and, and who's to think that it couldn't happen again this year. But I also think, um, and, and I put eight and four for my prediction too. So I, I think we're pretty much in lockstep there, but I think if you look at each game in a vacuum and um, it's obviously easy to do that and there are other factors that can change things, but I would not be surprised on a game by game basis if Michigan beat anyone on that um, roster outside of Ohio state, like yes, Wisconsin, Penn state, Indiana, they're all ranked um, and obviously ranked higher than Michigan because Michigan's unranked. But if you look at each game in a vacuum and those aren't dominant teams, there's a lot of good to has has the potential to be really good teams on there. But outside of Ohio State, every game with with the talent that Michigan has on its roster and um, the fact that they're happening, the, the majority of these games are happening uh, a month, two months, two and a half months into the season. Michigan is, is, is sort of going to have its, uh, its sea legs. They're going to be used to uh, it, its new systems and they're going to kind of be rolling. So Michigan, I put eight and four. Um, Michigan could absolutely be better. We learned last year they absolutely could be worse. But uh, I think that's part of what makes this season um, intriguing. I think fans are particularly interested because they want to get the taste of last year out of their, out of their um, mouths and, and, and um, sort of hope that it was an anomaly. But the, the fact that there is such a wide range of possibilities and, and, and so much variance that could happen in the season, uh, I think that uncertainty is is intriguing to, to a lot of people. And the last thing uh, for you from me here is uh, you had an excellent in your newsletter again yesterday. Uh, it started to look, started to shift towards this game that happens on Saturday, Western Michigan. Uh, I, I went on the Locked on Big Ten podcast as I do every Thursday and was asked, do you have any concern whatsoever? And even though uh, I feel like after reading your newsletter, maybe I do have reasons to be concerned, um, I said none whatsoever. That said, you, you touched on a little bit of the potential problem areas, but you also had said, bring it on. And we look at Caleb Ellaby, the quarterback, you look at those uh, veteran wide receivers, you look at the, the fact that they have, a, they have a really good front that's good at generating pressure. Uh, in your eyes, what is the biggest of all of these matchups and kind of what do you expect if you were to project uh, how this game will go? Give me your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I think this is the perfect opener for Michigan. Um, I really do. And there are things about Western Michigan um, that's dangerous and that could be um, problematic for Michigan. But the fact of the matter is, if if Michigan's going to struggle with a with a G5 team out of the gate, then um, I mean, that's going to tell you a lot about the season going forward. So I think the biggest matchup to watch is also going to be good for Michigan's growth. And that is Western Michigan's passing game against Michigan secondary, because um, you mentioned that'll be at quarterback. You got Jalen Hall, you got Sky Moore at wide receiver. And I think they're both two um, power five level uh, wide receivers. And, and they're people that a, they've seen the roadmap that that teams like Michigan state showed last year on, on how you beat Michigan. And I think they're going to challenge these corners, but that is what 
I think Michigan needs out of the gate is a team that is capable, but not dominant. That's going to challenge them. That's going to give them the opportunity to get game reps, um, but hopefully also get some confidence. And um, you don't want to play a really bad team or like an army team that you're, you're, you're not going to be honing on skills that aren't going to be beneficial later in the season. Um, you want to play a team that's going to challenge your areas that you hopefully have been spending this off season getting better at. And um, I think there's a lot to like about what's being heard about uh, Jamon Green. Um, Vincent Gray's always had the ball skills. I think it's kind of a confidence thing with him. You got DJ Turner, who's uh, had a good camp. And th these are guys that are um, that have been battling it out in camp that have been thinking about the previous year for nine months or whatever, and they want to get out there and get challenged. So um, you don't want to play like an Alabama that's going to really challenge you. Um, but you're, you, you want to play a team that's, um, hopefully going to challenge you and give you an opportunity to, uh, get some confidence. So there are some things about Western Michigan that can be scary, but you can't walk into a game against a Mac opponent to open the season and be afraid of the boogeyman. Um, this is a team that, Michigan of 2015 through 2019 um, would absolutely win. It's it's a game that Michigan of 2020 probably would and should win. And this is um, a game where Michigan of 2021 really needs to sort of make a statement and uh, win by three touchdowns. And, and I think this is a team that um, is looking to make that statement. And I, and I think Michigan will make that statement. Well, I'm curious to see exactly how it how it goes. And I, I do agree. It is an excellent opportunity to be challenged right out the gates uh, with, with some of those things. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for uh, for joining and being our inaugural guest for random guest. Uh, we will be doing this with someone new every single week. Uh, Scott, first, though, how can people subscribe to your newsletter we, we i do have a chiron at the beginning that shows your twitter handle but tell, tell us your twitter handle and uh, how people can subscribe to your newsletter uh appreciate that the, the newsletter is scottbell.substack.com you can also just google uh scott bell's newsletter and it's the first thing that comes up uh if you if you want me for michigan takes which i'm guessing the majority of people watching this is, is what it's looking for uh that twitter is sbell021 if you care about the twitter account that um pays the bills and if you like dallas uh area sports for some reason that is scott bell dmn and uh yeah i'm just really looking forward to a, a fun fall and if you're a subscriber i appreciate it if you're looking to subscribe uh have a special offer going up until kickoff 25 percent off and uh hopefully uh hopefully the season's a little more fun to write about than 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 last year was at times I certainly hope so. <laughs> so thanks again, Scott. We will see you people who are watching again next week when we do have another name that you all know. That's all lined up. That's ready to go. So look forward to that. Again, random guests. <laughs>